Hello, this is a quick presentation brought to you by PickaWeb and we're looking at how to choose a domain name for your business. And my name is Tony Messer, I'll be the host for this presentation and I'm one of the founders of pickaweb.co.uk, we're a UK based web hosting and domain registration company. Uh, and our sister company is maximalocal.co.uk and we help uh, small to medium sized businesses with their web design and web marketing. So if you do need any help on that front, don't hesitate to contact us. So let's get started. The first thing to bear in mind, our domains are cheap, they're easy and quick to register, they're issued on a first come first served basis. You don't need any paperwork or anything like that. And if you're just starting up a new business, you should definitely make registering a domain name one of your priorities. So let's have a look and find out which is the best one for you. So your internet, um, your domain name, it's your internet real estate. It's your property. No one can take it away from you once you've registered it. Um, and essentially you, re you register them on a year by year basis. You can register them for up to 10 years in fact. Um, so there's no long term obligation just as long as you decide to register them for. And one of the first questions that we get asked is, and it's a common misconception, is does my domain name need to be the same as my business name? And the categor categorical answer to that is no, it doesn't. You can register whatever domain name you want to. It doesn't need to be the same as your registered company name. So let's say, for example, Eddie's Barber Shop Limited. They could register Eddie's Barbers, Eddie the Barber, Eddie's Barber Shop, Eddie the Barber Shop, Eddie's Hair and Beards, whatever type of domain they want to. So don't feel that you have to be constrained or limited by registering the same domain name as your company name. So then you need to consider which is the best domain extension for you. And um, uh, by um, extension, what we mean here is the suffix. So for example, .co.uk or .com, that type of thing. Now it's purely um, personal preference, but as a minimum, I would strongly recommend let's say the example of a UK based business that you get the .co.uk and the .com. Certainly always try to register the .com. Try to get a domain where you can see that the .com and all the other extensions are available and take the .com off of the market. And we'll talk about why that is important a little bit later on. Some other considerations, things like localization, uh, organization and industry. And let's have a look at those. So localization that refers to the country level. So you should register, if you get the .com first, register the country version of yours. So if you're in the UK, for example, it could be .co.uk, there's also .uk. Then if you're in Spain, for example, .es, France is .fr. You can even go down to city level. So you could get .london, for example, to demonstrate that you're very much a London-based business. You've also got organization. This is, these are usually reserved for not non-profit or charitable organizations but anyone can register them you don't have to be one of these or, um, types of organizations but let's take the example maybe someone's got the .com version you think that's a great domain name I'm gonna register .org I would probably counsel you against doing that because you may uh, in over the long term regret that because people may get confused and they may go to the .com um, domain instead of yours they may forget that you're a .org and, and really, I think it's just a bit of a compromise. So try to get domains where you can definitely reserve the .com, even if you don't use it for your business, just to take it off the market and stop any confusion. Then with industry domains, there's loads and loads of different types for most industries. So you could register, for example, a .bike or .photography, depending on your industry. And, and I'll talk to, I'm gonna talk in a moment about what to do if you do register several domain names. So don't worry about that side of things. Another really good question that we often get asked is should you register domains for SEO purposes? Now if you're not familiar with SEO, that stands for search engine optimization. And this is the practice of um, uh, tweaking your website in order to get a better position in the search engines, in particular obviously Google. And the question here is should you use keywords in the domain name uh, to try to obtain a better position in the search engine? So let's take Eddie's Barbershop. Uh, they could register something like, if they're trying to put keywords in there, then they would have bestmenshairdresserlondon.com or the example that we looked at earlier, they could just register eddiesbarbershop.com. Now eddiesbarbershop.com to me looks like a more genuine, realistic business. The other option, bestmenshairdresserlondon.com, it just looks like they're trying to kind of game the system and stuff loads of keywords in there. 
And that's really the point that we're trying to get across here. I just think that that's a much less spammy option. So I would definitely try to avoid that practice. And incidentally, what you can do when you build your website is start to include keywords in the URL. So let's say we've got eddieshairlondon.com forward slash, and then he could talk about his location. Let's say he's in uh, Richmond or something like that. He could put forward slash hairdresser Richmond or whatever it may be. Um, and that, that's something that you can play about with uh, once you've actually got your website built. But as a rule of thumb, I would definitely caution you against trying to game the system by putting loads of keywords in your domain name. Okay, so let's move on. Another point is about including hyphens in the domain name. And sometimes you may be tempted to do this. Let's say that you've seen a really good domain name that you like, but the dot com's taken. So you think, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just, I'll just add a hyphen in. So in this example here, eddiesbarbershop.com is taken, but he thinks, oh, well, I'll go for eddies-barbershop.com. But the problem here is it's easy to mis misplace or even omit the hyphen. And people could get confused, they could put it in the wrong place, not visit your website and just think, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna go somewhere else. So overall, my strong advice is avoid the use of hyphens, look for an alternative that you're happy with that doesn't include them. Then we're on to copyrights and trademarks. And the rule here is, you know, be sensible, try to avoid infringing copyrights and trademarks. Let's say you're selling uh, a well-known brand of a particular product, that's one of your main sellers, and you try to put in their low cost xyzproduct.com. You know, you, you need to really be careful here. These, these companies, they've got teams of people that are keeping an, an eye out for any infringements. So you need to be careful. If you're unsure, I would definitely take legal advice on that. But oh, but just you know, try to be sensible. Try to avoid getting into um, legal tussles with these types of companies. They tend to have more lawyers and legal people than, than you will. Okay, lecture over. Let's move on. Domain squatting. So this is um, where uh, they call it domain squatting or cyber squatting, and it does happen, unfortunately. And this is where people will see that you registered, let's say the doc, you've registered the .co.uk domain, somebody else will register the .com, they, they're then gonna try to hold it ransom and try to get you to purchase it from them for a, you know, typically for a higher price. And it's, it's very easy to avoid. Just make sure, as I said at the beginning, that you try to get the main extension. So definitely take the .com off the market. And that just stops, any, stops that possibility it stops it dead in its tracks, okay? And what we can do then is set up what's called domain redirection with all those other domains. And this is the this is a technique uh, which is very useful if you've got several domain names that's got different extensions. So you've got maybe uh, you want to use the .co.uk as your main website. So you've purchased as well the .com, the .london, the .uk, maybe the .net or whatever. And all you do is you set up what's called domain parking. It's really easy to set up. If you use a host uh, that has cPanel, and most of them do, it's a five second job. And all you do is redirect them. So if someone types in the .com by mistake, it will just whiz it straight through instantly without them even noticing straight through to the .co.uk site. So if you've got several domain names, just set up the domain parking. Then another um, thing that you need to think about is um, misspelling options. So this is where you maybe have a domain that people could possibly misspell. So the example here I've got is just off the top of my head an example like optimization with a Z or optimization with an S. And then you're thinking, well, I, you know, I've got I need to register both domain names just in case. But you can go crazy here. Then you start thinking, well, shall I register the .com as well as the .co.uk? It just starts you going down a, a crazy path. And really. The advice here is just try to uh, avoid getting complicated sp spellings in your domain names. Just keep it simple, um, and this is really easy to avoid if you just choose your domains well. In terms of length, you do have 63 characters to, be to play with, but bear in mind, longer domains, they generally uh, are harder to remember. And as I said before, try to avoid that temptation of stuffing keywords in. You can do that with the URLs once you build your website. And really overall, shorter domain names, you know, we're humans, they are easier to remember. When you register your domain name, you need to consider your um, privacy. 
So with a who is search, people can do a search on domains and it will show who actually owns the domain names, but you can hide your personal details. Now with the top level domains or TLDs as they're known, these are things like .com or .net, this can be done at an extra cost and, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's a company registration or a personal registration, you can hide your details there, but there is an extra annual cost for that. With UK domains, it's slightly different. It is free for personally registered domains. So if you're registering a domain name for yourself, as opposed to using it for business purposes, you can use the Whois privacy. However, if you're registering it as a business, there isn't a privacy option there. And Nominet, who are the UK uh, overall registrar, registrar who, who um, administer all UK domains, if they find that you're using Whois privacy for a domain name, um, which is a business one, then they will ask you to remove it or ultimately they, they could potentially suspend it, your registration. So best not to uh, push that that particular issue. But do, do bear that, these things in mind when it comes to domain privacy. So the process for buying a domain name, it's very simple, just check its availability. If you go to pickaweb.co.uk, you can see there's a search box there. You can just check if it's available, if it is, you just choose a number of years that you want to register it for, your personal or business details, including your email address. Choose whether you want who is privacy and then basically purchase it. You'll receive an email confirming it. There's no paperwork, there's no sort of certificate or anything like that. And you can check on the who is to make sure that your domains um, have been registered. They're instantly registered. It may take a couple of hours to show up on the who is though, as the database just needs to update. But that's a straightforward process. Anyone can do it. And what will happen is when the domain is ready for renewal, you'll receive several periodic uh, notifications by email. So 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, 10 days, etc. Um, and just follow the instructions, just need to log into your client area and then you can just renew it for as many years as you want to, even up to 10 years. So what happens if domains expire? Well, most domains, they can actually be renewed if they do expire, um, but a word of caution here, and I always advise, I advise people try to reg to renew them before they expire, well before they expire. You can set them to auto renew as well, just through your client area uh, with most most companies. And the point here is be quick if it does expire. Normally you get a 30 day period after the expiry, uh, after the expiry date to, to, to actually renew it. Uh, with the UK domains, there's no extra fee during that grace period. You just renew it and it will then uh, apply that. But with the TLDs like .com and .net, what happens here is slightly different. You get that 30 day grace period where you can renew it for free, so there's no fee there. However, after the 30 day grace period, there's what's known as a 40 day redemption period. And during the redemption period, you can renew it, but it does cost extra. And it's quite a hefty fee. It's much more than the cost of registering or renewing your domain name at normal rates. It's much more expensive. If it goes past that, if you don't redeem it, then the domain is reissued on a first come, first served basis at the discretion of the registry. So it'll, it'll be sometime after the redemption period has expired and somebody else could register it. So if you're not sure and it's in that redemption fee, uh, redemption period, it's worth paying that extra fee to guarantee that you get the registration. Okay, so you have been warned. So a quick wrap up, remember, Domain names are cheap, they're easy to register, and they are your internet real estate. I would definitely reg recommend registering the .com uh, domain name as well as any other domain names because you do want to prevent that domain or cyber squatting. Try to avoid stuffing loads of keywords in your domain names. Just be cool, go for the right domain name that represents your business. Things like hyphens, long domains, or hard spellings, try to avoid them wherever possible. You know, just just keep your domain short and sweet. Look out for copyrights and trademark issues. You don't want to get into any troubles there. And if you're pu purchasing several domain names, then do consider using the domain parking for redirecting all your domain names to your main website. If you're worried about privacy, then you can set up who is privacy. With the, with the UK domain names, it's free, but it's only available for personal personally registered domain names. With the top level domains like .com, you can um, get a who is privacy, but there is an extra cost and anyone can do that, even businesses. When it comes to renewing your domain name, try to renew them early to avoid any downtime or late fees, particularly for the .com domains. Well, that's all. Thanks very much for your attention. If you need any help, for example, with your online marketing, 
just go head over to Maxima Local. We've got a free book that we've written there for you. It's called the Website Survival Kit. There's no jargon in there. It's nice and simple. It's a really quick read. You'll fly through it and you're, you're going to learn absolutely everything that you need to do to get a successful online presence. So head over there. You can get it absolutely free. Just click on the download book button and you can have it straight away. Thank you very much for your attention. I do appreciate it. If you've got any comments, any questions, just put them below. We do read them and we will get back to you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.